welcome everybody to this uh, webinar about heats and uh, our uh, design exploration will uh, help uh, you get discover better designs faster. So the um, in today's uh, meeting we have uh, Leandro Galvin from uh, the heats team at Siemens uh, and then uh, myself and we also have Kim Blaud as uh, the support engineer from CE Valley. So the agenda for today is that I will uh, give a, a short introduction to uh, CA value, followed by a explanation about heats and design space exploration, and then we'll finish up by a uh, live demonstration from Kim, and uh, we'll wrap up uh, with any questions. So uh, if you have any questions, please submit those uh, in the uh, chat window. So who is CA value? It's a company founded in 2005. We have uh, three offices in Sweden, but we, uh, we have customers around the world. Uh, we're an expert consulting company, uh, that has been working with a uh, simulation driven product development for uh, for many years and uh, we have a team of highly experienced uh, 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 consultants so in uh, addition to services we also um, offer products as uh, distributors and uh, partners to Siemens with Pete's and uh, sim center Ainson in addition to uh, uh, driving simulators from the grade on the uh, automotive market so our main focus is uh, C analysis and method development uh, and uh, as we will see, the importance of process automation and uh, design exploration. And uh, as you can see, some of the customers that we're working on today. So if we look at the, um, the CA environment, it, it can be described with these four boxes. And the, the, um, we'll get into the, the top boxes today, but everything is basically resting on the process assessment and development. So. What low cases are you running? What results are you extracting? And uh, what part of the organization should be doing what? So everything starts with uh, confident predictions. So basically achieving reliable results with mature models of your products and, uh, and uh, methods. Then by extending the, uh, the maturity, you also increase the value when you introduce automation. So instead of doing manual simulations, you can automate and have um, uh, the answers produced much faster and also minimizing errors as uh, manual iterations can be, be quite dangerous. And then the next step, which is the one that we'll be focusing on today, is the design exploration. So it's essentially, we're trying to make better designs faster. And uh, that's what uh, Leandro will be, be showing today. So CE so Value uh, will work with Siemens on produ or, um, providing the, uh, the heats technology and what we can do in, in uh, addition to just uh, being on site with on site resources to our customers we can also assist our customers with audits so we can be an objective partner to to customers to see how mature are the process what needs to be done and how we can also deliver uh, work packages and specialized training to increase the the knowledge of uh, of the technology and uh, also be a, a back office support. So not just a product support, but uh, doing uh, sort of like mini pro projects uh, on, on demand. So with that, um, I'll leave uh, the focus to uh, Leandro. Okay, let me just start to share over here my screen. Wait a second, please. Let me just change. OK, right now I suppose that you can see my screen. So the intention over here is just to emphasize you how so many companies just let me just. Yes, right now it's 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 better. How so many customers, how so many companies use simulation just for validate, troubleshoot and predicting the idea over here. And even our intention is to emphasize to you go further. You can beyond that phases. You can try to look the new you can innovate this is exactly that we would like to emphasize what we are uh, what we uh, would like to offer over here today is how you can automate and explore the new so it's a tool exactly to you innovate find better projects find better design faster in terms to you reduce your wasting time in terms to you gain market share exactly to you enable your engineering department or research, or research and development, or the manufacturing engineering, as I will show you over here, in terms to 
innovation. So the key word over here is innovation. So if you'd like, for example, to optimize or finding better solutions just using by hand, so in a manual simulation, for example, the idea is exactly to find one better design, as you can see over here. Let me just include one pointer. So it's exactly you can see over here. But sometimes each bullet like that one, you can spend a day, a week, or a month. So what is the limit over that? You have some limitation in terms of timing. You have some limitation in terms of variables. You have some limitation in terms of parameters. So it's possible just for a few parameters. It's a really time consuming, as I mentioned before, and requires a lot of experience. What we would like to offer you is one alternative method. On that alternative method is exactly to you. Find better design faster in terms, as I told you, reducing your wasting time and you can gain market share. So with that technology that we, will, that we will talk today, we have no limitations in terms of variables, no limitations in terms of parameters, and exactly you can improve your design. You can improve your innovation departments in terms, in terms of to gain market share, as I mentioned many times, in fact, to you, emphasize and you keep in mind on and you keep in mind that, that high level message but what we are talking over here is just on the research and development departments but exactly with the same hits license the same license you can make that kind of analogy on the manufacturing engineering in terms to you increase the production versus headcount for example and uh, with that analogy, as I mentioned before, you can use the same heat license. It's exactly the same one to you improve your manufacturing facilities. I will show you over here some examples exactly to illustrate a little bit more what I'm what I mean. I mean, in the, I mean that you have no limitations in terms of parameters. You can include, for example, AI in your. Uh, optimization strategy. So in fact, it's, it's a really powerful uh, technology that is use, it's using for many companies. And one, uh, one thing that I really would like to emphasize that we have a really great team over here in Europe exactly to support you on the first phase of implementation. So CA Valley have a really good team in terms to provide you training in terms to provide you best practice in terms to provide you uh, all kinds of information that you need to find better design faster. So what is HITS? HITS is a multidisciplinary design analysis and optimization technology. Uh, the main development is located in US, but even we have some development over here in Europe and a lot of companies such Forge, FMC, Scania, uh, General Motors, so many companies, not just on the automotive area, but even on the aeros aerospace and defense. Marini, Marini, it's a really good mark for us. We have so many customers on that uh, using HITS exactly for that uh, for that uh, application. So, and HITS is a simultaneously perform optimization design space exploration. So, HITS have a really good. Uh, Algorithm that I will talk a little bit a little bit further over here, exactly to optimize, exactly to you leverage your best good ideas to you finding the new. Exactly what I mean over here is innovation. So HITS is using for all kinds of industries, all kinds of industries. We have no limitations. Aerospace and defense, automotive and transportation. I will show. Over here, some examples. One one kind of industry that is really important for us is electronics and semiconductors. So right now, even over there in Sweden, we are running uh, we are running a really big a really big project with a local company exactly on that areas. Marini, as I told before, I know that in Nordics region there are so many uh, companies uh, on the marine area. But again, we have no limitations in terms of industry. We can innovate all the time. We can find in the new, we can explore the new using exactly that very powerful tool. So HITS is based in, in four main pillars. What is our, our four main pillars? The first one, process automation. On the next slide, you will see 
we have no limitation in terms of integration. We call it over here internally as a portal. So we have access with the Rolly CAD and the Rolly CAE tools, the Rolly one, not just Siemens technology, but even third party tools. We can create the workflow and automatize that workflow. So that one, it's our first pillar. Our second pillar is distributed execution. On that distributed execution, you can manage your CAD or your CAE uh, license in terms to run locally or run in the clouds or run in the cluster. So HEATS can manage the license for you. You can make one, we can do one internal study in terms of reducing or increasing your CAD or your CAE tools exactly using HEATS. So HEATS can leverage your CAE or CAD license. Our third pillar, our third pillar is efficient search. I will talk to you later, as I will talk later, we have a really powerful algorithm called Sherpa, exactly to optimize, to finding the new, to explore the new in terms of design space exploration. So we have a really powerful algorithm, as I told you before, and our post processing. I will show you. I will show you what, what I mean over here. And then our, our fourth pillar is insight and discovery. So our post processing, it's really, it's really uh, powerful that uh, you can find in the new, you can leverage your past good ideas in terms to create the innovation. So in terms of portals or integration, as we call it over here internally, we have connections, we have integration with all CAD all CAE tools, not only Siemens tools, as you can see over here, like Sync Center 3D, Sync Center Motion for multi body dynamics. I'm seeing, as David mentioned before, so CA value it's a really important part, Siemens partner for I'm seeing for 1D simulation or system simulation, system simulations. You can see over here the all uh, Siemens tools that have connection, and even third-party tools, as you can see over here, even third-party tools, it's really no problem. And one thing that I'd like to emphasize, because so many tools like that one, it's for implicit or explicit analysis, for example, but normally is located, normally that kind of license is located on the research and development uh, departments. But even over here, we have connection with plant simulation. Plant simulation is to you leverage your uh, manufacturing facilities. You can optimize your manufacturing facilities. Up to now, uh, we are we are going to have, and we've, even we got good success exactly for that kind of application that I will show you some, ex some examples over here later on. So talking terms of process automation, as I mentioned over here, HITS simplify the workflow with HITS, you can simulate, you can create your workflow. We have no restrictions in terms of integration. You can use your, even your internal softwares to create that workflow. And over here, as I, as I mentioned before, you saw the all portals that we have. So we created the workflow and even we automatize that workflow. So you can easily, you can easily create that connections exactly to you, leverage your past ideas, and you innovate in a very simple way. So as soon as I finish over here my slides, Kim will provide you one demo. Uh, he will open the HEATS GUI, the graphical user interface, exactly to you see how easy it is to, is to create that workflow and exactly run an optimization simulation. Okay? so. Uh, as, as David uh, mentioned in the beginning, if you have some comments, if you have some concern, please, we will, we will be happy to uh, answer you over here by chat or in the end of the presentation. It's really no problem. So right now, I will start a really important topic, really important topic. Over here is an illustration in terms of traditional process for design exploration. On the traditional process, you need to frozen your design. For example, in that example, it's one CFD simulation. And when you froze it, one design, a lot of times you need to simplify. Why? Because it's a really time consuming in terms of computer behavior. It's a really time consuming. And a lot of other tools don't run optimization, just run DOE analysis. 
One thing that it's really important to, to illustrate over here, select the algorithm. When you have some interaction with the software, so which algorithm do I need to use to optimize some parts, to optimize some, some assembly, for example? It's a gradient search, it's a algorithm is an etic, it's algorithm is an etic, it's a, uh, uh, a, a simulated annealing, I don't know. In the market, there are so many kinds of tools that you need to have some interaction on that. And even tuning, even tuning. If you need to tune in, so you need a very expert people to handle, to, mani to, to manipulate the software, no? So if you use that traditional process, maybe you can have some problems. We can introduce errors, require interactions, as I mentioned, and require a very exper experienced people to work on that, but we have some reactions. It's too difficult, too error prone, too costly, and a lot of times you don't use the full advantages, you don't use the full capabilities that the software provide you. What we are offering you today, we are show you hits, that hits you can jump from the frozen, from the frozen uh, design directly to the, Automatize that search and interpret results. You don't need to simplify the model. You don't need to have interactions with the software. Kim will show you. You don't need to tune the algorithm. And even you don't need to select the optimization strategy. He's exactly do that for you. Why? Because we have Sherpa. We have a really powerful algorithm that enable you to run uh, all kinds of optimizations, all kinds of optimization in a very simple way. Don't need to hire a very experienced people to handle the software. Why? Because he exactly do that for you. So let's make one analogy over here. If you'd like to climb the mountain, when you would like to climb some mountain, you don't know what you will see in front of you. You don't know if you have a lot of icy, heavy snow. You don't know, don't know if you will lose gravel, for example. You don't know. But, but you have certain tools. You have certain tools. You have helmets, you have a hammer, you have special shoes. You have certain tools. But sometimes you don't know which tool do you need to use what you or for to facing what you see in front of you. So, what is the analogy that I'd like that you really keep in mind? We have Sherpa. Sherpa is only one tool that you need that as is a hybrid solution, Sherpa can find the best solution for you. Sherpa can find the better strategy to you climbing the mountain. Why? Because, he's, he, uh, because Sherpa is hybrid. Sherpa can run on the fly. Sherpa can combine different strategies on the fly. This is exactly that I'd like that you keep in, keep in mind. And even we don't need to simplify the model. We don't need uh, to, have, to manipulate the algorithm. We don't need to select the optimization strategy. Why? As I told you before, as Sherpa is hybrid and adaptive, Sherpa can find the best solution for you. As I told you, Kim will provide you one presentation in the end of my slides over here. And you will see that you just need to select Sherpa on the software and the numbers of evaluation, the numbers of interactions that automatically, automatically Sherpa can run the optimization for you in a very simple way. So it's seamless the all CAE and CAD process to you. Leverage your past good ideas in exactly to you. Find the new and create innovation in a very simple way. Why I'm talking a lot of Sherpa? You can see that I am sometimes I'm so repetitive because I really would like that you keep in mind that benchmark is very important. It's very important. So we uh, provide a proof that Sherpa approach combined the best of all search strategies. As you can see over here, there are so many uh, optimization strategies. And that benchmark is a public, OK? It's a really public benchmark made by Boeing. So that benchmark was done in US, made by Boeing. And on the results over here, you can see each different search strategy has benefits, of course. And Sherpa combines the all benefits to solve any problem better than 
any algorithm in general, not just using that benchmark, but with other benchmarks, you can see that Sherpa curve on the red one over here can find the better solution faster. Why? Because combine so many peaks and valleys, and you can see over here, combine the all strategies. And as I mentioned, as Sherpa is a hybrid solutions, so Sherpa can search the better tool on the fly, exactly to find the better strategy for climbing the mountain, as I showed you uh, on the last slides. So, and the last but not least is insight and discovery. You can remember our four main pillars. The last one is the insight and discovery. Sherpa have uh, hits have a really powerful post processing, and on that post processing, you can leverage your past good ideas. You can find in the new exactly to create the innovation. You can explore the design in a very simple way. So process automation. Uh, process automation is our first one. And then oh, over here, we can summarize. As soon as we validate the CAE and CAD model, we can create the workflow and automatize the workflow is our first pillar, process automation. The second one is distrib distributed execution that you can run locally or you can run in a cloud or you can run in a, cloud, in a cluster. We can find an efficient search. This a really, it's made by our very efficient uh, algorithm called Sherpa that is embedded hits. And the last one is inside and discovery. So our four main pillars is over here. Process automation, distributed execution, efficient search, and inside and discovery. So David, before starting the technical examples that we have over here, do you have any concern? Do you have any comments to add over here on my first level of presentation? You are on mute. It's a time to drink some coffee. <laughs> That's right. No, I think uh, the, the important topic here is the ease of use. Uh, like uh, Leandro has explained, uh, it's easy to uh, automate your process. It's easy to utilize the computer resource as much as possible. And uh, with Sherpa, it takes uh, off a lot of load from the engineer to focus on defining the problem rather than spending time on selecting the algorithm. And uh, lastly, the, uh, the insight and discovery, having a powerful post-processor that is aimed towards extracting as much uh, knowledge out of the result as possible. Yeah, you don't need to simplify the model. You don't need to select the algorithm. It's a, in a very simple way. As I mentioned before, you can leverage your past good idea. You can find the new, you can innovate using that very powerful algorithm called Sherpa. Again, Sherpa is embedded HITS. So HITS is the name of the software and Sherpa is the name of our optimization algorithm. And you don't need to select the optimization strategy. Sherpa do that exactly for you. So let's start over here some uh, technical examples and then i will uh, i will uh, i will put a king on the floor exactly to he runs the technical uh, presentation the demo the hits demo for you so the first example i bring over here is uh, from airbus so airbus it's one of our customers okay and all over here we uh, illustrate that hits can be uh, applied for all kinds of industries, okay? All kinds of industries. That examples is to optimize the air condition systems. So on the air condition system, you need to select the better fun, of course, to improve, to, uh, to have the better uh, efficiency on the, on the airplane air condition. And what uh, we have some ob objective. The objective uh, is to reduce the temperature, as you can see over here, at the sensor from uh, 200 kelvins to lowest level as possible, ideally, for example, 10 kelvins, and maintain the pressure drop, so 5k pascal, as you can see over here. And we have some variables. We have some variables. On that three variables that we have, we have two different kinds of concepts of fun that you can see over here. So we have a radius. Of a curve of a helicoidal channel, we have a deep helicoidal cut and a width, if you with a width of helicoidal cuts, and we have the blades. What is the idea? The idea over here is to find which blades is the better one to achieve that uh, to achieve uh, uh, that target. So, automatically again, 
automatically we can build or course the the systems do you remember to frozen the design that you want then you can test so over here it will be a cfd optimization you can test the all variables that you want we can explore the new you can see over here that automatically automatically heats can change the blades and on the fly as soon the analysis running you can see the results each point like that one it's one interaction so each point is one it's one interaction and as soon finish over here we can access you can we, we can have a pareto a pareto post processing and find the better blades exactly to uh, achieve the target the previous targets that you made before and uh, in a very simple way you just can touch on each bullet over here or each point over here and see how perform the blades of the air condition so the temperature over here the value is reduced over 90 percent and the pressure door drop continues the same one so that one is just one example using uh cfp code on that example is done by uh, star ccm plus heats okay but heats is not just is not uh, using only for cfp analysis as i told you heats we have a connection with all cad and all cae uh, tools even we can emphasize another example made by edag in germany on that one uh on that one, you can you need to find the better compromise with so many different kinds of applications. So you need to, we have some targets to reduce the weight, for example, in 20%. You need to reduce the cost over here in 10%. And you need, you have a lot of different kinds of analysis. So they all automotive manufacturers continue to rely just on the DOE analysis. And over here, on that example, you, we can optimize using so many different kinds of analysis, body stiffness, for example, using Nastran, durability analysis, for example, using sync center, uh, using sync center durability, as heats have a connection with sync center durability, no problem. Roof crush, for example, explicit analysis. For explicit analysis on the roof crush, on, on the roof or roof crush, on the rear crash, side crash, all point safety, front crash, for example, for explicit analysis using LS Dyna, using radios, no problem. We have connection with those with those software. We, even with Abacus explicit, no problem. We have connection with that. And NVH using Astron, we have connection. And with heats, heats we can manage the all compromise on that example over here exactly to after 250 evaluation we found uh, 49 feasible designs we can identify the better design with 18 percent of reduction okay and less than five percent increase in the cost this is another uh, real example not only using cfd but even structural behavior but Kids have a connection with vehicle dynamics too. As, uh, as David mentioned before, CA value uh, is a VA grade reseller. Oh, pardon, is a VA grade reseller. So VA grade is a software for vehicle dynamics, and it have a connection with VA grades. On that example, is not using VA grade, but is using Adam's car. That Scania in Sweden would like to make the better correlation between the baseline and the improved design. The idea over here is to correlate the, the metrics, correlate the curve, uh, experimental and simulated analysis. I really like to talk about vehicle dynamics because I did my master's on vehicle dynamics, on the truck vehicle dynamics. I really like that kind of subject. And the challenge over here, as I mentioned, is to simulate the model, not produce amplitudes, a result of the observation on, on the measurements. As I told, is a correlation between experimental analysis and uh, and simulation, and made many variables. And the objective over here is to achieve 85% of error, reduce uh, reduce 85% of the errors. So that one is another example that it's hit in combination with a software for vehicle dynamics. Other example for manufacturing, 
Digital Factory Optimization Concepts. That uh, example, it's really interesting. It's a really interesting uh, example because it's the integration between heats and plant simulation. Plant simulation is a simulation tool for manufacturing stuff. So over here, as you can see, the idea is to simulate your line and optimize the layout of that line. And as soon optimize that layout, the idea is to reduce the wasting time, is to have a really better study in terms of robots. So in which, in which part of the line do we need to include or remove some, some robots? And on the final, you can see some really interesting, some really interesting uh, parameters over here. You have the all parameters, as you can see here. We have the material channel, so each uh, each bullet that you can see, each part of the line, you can see it's it's of course everything parameterized, and we have some responses. Please double check the response, the output, a thousand five hundred, the production time, the number of box, and the channel empties. You can see over here is the baseline, and after the optimization, you can have the same output, reduce it a little bit. The production time is, as you can see over here, the number of boxes reduces and channel empty, zero, zero. So that one is another example that heat can be applied on the research and development area with so many kinds of applications, so many kinds of applications, CFD, structural behavior, durability behavior, uh, vehicle dynamics, and even on the manufacturing stuffs, we can apply the optimization in manufacturing stuffs even. So right now, I'd like to take the floor King to he start the demo. Before that, David, do you have any comments? Do you have any concern that you'd like to emphasize on that examples I showed? No, I think those are good examples in showing uh, exactly what you showed uh, about design exploration and, and heats. So uh, I would also like to encourage uh, everybody listening in to uh, post any comments or or uh, voice any any questions. So um, other than that, you want to go ahead, Kim? So yeah, clean. Sure. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you. Great. I can see your screen. So there was something in the chat. Oh yeah, someone is asking. Can you send us the slide deck? I'm, I'm sure yes, can of do course. It yeah, of course. All right, perfect. Um, um, all right, so I will be showing a uh, a short demo of of heats. Um, kind of going through the process of setting up an entire heat study. Um, and essentially, what we're going to do is uh, go through these steps. Um, we tend to break them out in five different steps. We have process, parameters, tags, study, and run. And um, yeah, you will. This will make sense when we go over and look at the heat skew. Um, so I will do that right now. Okay, so this is the the, the heat skew. And what we're going to do today is go through these five tabs above to set up a heat study. Uh, we start at the process tab, and this is where we set up our workflow of the different uh, analysis tools we want to incorporate in our study. Um, first thing to do is go to the analysis portals drop down menu and choose whatever CA tools you want to include. Uh, for this sake, I'm just going to add a few. So maybe we have some CAD model that we're pushing parameter changes to. Maybe we do a, I don't know, star CCM um, CFD analysis after that. And for fun, let's do maybe something not uh, Siemens related. We can do a NASTRAM portal if we would like to do a uh, FE analysis uh, on top of that, uh, and I don't know, maybe a maybe a uh, cost analysis in the end in Excel, for instance. Um, so, as uh, Leandro mentioned, uh, these things are called portals, and they are dir direct interfaces to many of the common uh, popular CE tools that uh, our customers use. Um, if if we don't have any portals for any specific software you use uh, at your company, or if you have an internal software or scripts of any sort, uh, there is an option to run something called a uh, general analysis, which is this portal here, or not portal, but but, but an analysis in itself. Um, 
And what this requires essentially that you have something that can run in batch and ASCII base input and output files so that he so that we can tell Higgs where to collect uh, or modify design variables and collect uh, responses from. Okay, so uh, uh, after we set up our workflow, what we need to identify is which uh, files each respective uh, portal should use. Um, and this is typically like for an NX, you would provide an input file of a, a CAD part, uh, or a NASDAQ file would be an input file of some sort. Maybe I can add something. I should have something like a NASDAQ file. Maybe I'm an, I have an input file, um, and I can also add an OP2 result file, for instance. And this is similar for, for all the portals and the general NAS as well. Whatever we want to execute on, we need to add that uh, the, as an input file and an output file. Um, <clears throat> um, for the general portal, uh, we need to also add a execution command. Uh, so kind of telling Heats, uh, how do we execute this software? So that is typically uh, like run me.exe. I maybe it takes an input command, uh, like input file uh, of some sort. Uh, very simplistic, but, but that's usually the way to do because for the portals, um, we have default execution commands and uh, variables connecting to the input files, so it's very much straightforward. For the generic uh, general analysis, you will also, as, as I said, uh, provide execution command. Um, alongside that, we also want to perhaps say how we should uh, execute these analysis. Perhaps we have a uh, CFD cluster of some sort we would like to send the uh, star CCM analysis to and by default we're telling Heats to run this locally but we can set up different uh, compute resources so that we can send things to other cluster environments that we might have. <clears throat> um, alongside this there are also some other complexities we can add to the workflow. Um, for instance let's say we would have several load cases in star CCM. Uh, we can create something we call parallel group. So if these two are not dependent on each other, meaning that we don't need this to have been run before running another load case, we can add, stack these vertically and we're telling Heath that it's okay to run these uh, some simultaneously. Um, other complexities that we also can add is, uh, as Leandro mentioned, we can add the loops, like if we would like to, um, loop over certain values of some sort and maybe gather uh, or extract one value or uh, or a, a vector of values downstream to another analysis. We can do that by adding loops. Uh, also, we have the actual possibility to nest uh, heat studies within heat studies. Um, so, yeah, so Let's say we've done the workflow now, so we, ident we identified the analysis tools we want to use. We've added inputs and output files, um, and for the general analysis, we also added a execution command that we need to we need to uh, have to execute that specific software. Um, and we also show some um, the compute resources we would like to distribute uh, the calculations on. Um, next step is to go to the parameters tab. And here we, we need to tell Heats what uh, variables and responses we want to include in the study. So I will go ahead and just maybe create a few variables and name them of some sort. Uh, length, maybe we have some uh, material ID. And we have a few different types of uh, uh, variables. Uh, the most common one is the continuous type, and this is essentially providing heats with uh, uh, the possibility to change a variable between um, a certain values. Uh, we need to set a baseline value and at what resolution heats should be able to change this value. Um, besides continuous, we also have discrete. Uh, or actually we can we have the we, let's show dependent first. Um, dependent you you get the you get the option to write whatever you want in a Python prompt. Uh, there are some Handy already Python functions available to you, but you can also write the whatever you want relating to to uh, to other variables that you defined. So if 
x is larger than two, then something something and extract a value. Uh, for materiality, maybe we can do uh, we can show the discrete one. Discrete is essentially telling heats to choose between a certain set of values or strings, and these sets are created up here in the manage set button. I can create a set. Let's add a few. Let's say uh, so. This was material, so maybe steel, aluminium, and titanium. For instance, uh, so I created that, and then I can choose that. Uh, use my set and I set some baseline and he will essentially throughout the study choose one of these three uh, depending on what the search algorithm wants to check next. Um, we also have two other ones, one constant, which is essentially a uh, a constant value and takes this if you would for some reason have a string uh, defined uh, that is added to, to to one of your input files in one of your analysis. So. One thing good to note with constant, you, you more or less set a baseline, but these are also used together with if you want to do robustness and reliability studies to check product performance and sensitivities to tolerance and stuff like that. You can actually uh, create distributions of a lot of different variants, have that and kind of provide that to a variable uh, for robustness and reli reliability studies. Um, so once I've created my design variables, I also want to tell heats which responses do I want to extract. Um, so that's essentially the same. Create a few responses, and I don't know. Maybe we'll do mass, stress, and uh, cost. Uh, same here. We have a different, some different types of responses. Most common one is a tag response, which is, yeah, it's kind of what it says. You, this is where you're extracting a value from one of the input files or through the portals, essentially from one of the outputs of the analysis tools. And I will I will get into that with the next tab as well. Um, we also have the type formula, and it's similar to what I showed with the design variable. You get a Python prompt allowing you to do whatever calculations you actually want. Uh, so you can reference you can reference a tag variable and do times times 200 or something like that. Also, you can import Python libraries if you want to and do yeah as complex calculations as you, as you want in, in these prompts. Um, <clears throat> we also have a curve fit response, and this is essentially if you want to uh, match responses to a reference curve or, or a target curve, or if you want to push a curve above or below a curve, uh, this is very useful. Um, we also have a, a filter option if if you have data from a simulation that you want to go run through a filter. We have that as as a type of response. We also have FLD, which is form limiting diagram, which is very specific to yeah, sheet metal stepping and explicit dynamic simulations. Um, also, we have response surface model. So if you have a response surface model from legacy data, um, supplier, or um, previous heat study, you can use that as a source for certain responses as well. Um, all right, so so we've we've created a workflow. We defined input and output files. We've set some execution commands, compute resources. We also defined the variables that we want to include in the heat study. Uh, next step is to go to the tagging tab and actually tell heats where to locate the variables and responses in the various input files. So uh, we have some different technologies to uh, define these locations, uh, and it all depends on what type of input and output file you're uh, dealing with. Uh, if you're running portals, as I said, the in there's a direct interface, and we have uh, some behind scripts that will do much of the tagging for you. Uh, in some, for some, so this is a typical yeah, portal tagging. So, so you, you will parse the input file and, this, and then you will get possibility to change for, yeah, for this, it's the property, uh, like a thickness on, on the, on, uh, uh, on a shell, on some shells in, in this uh, NASA input file. But yes, like the NASA input file is an ASCII based file. So another technology could be to do a fixed with, like NASA is fixed with eight. So, 
uh, you would have the possibility to go in and change node coordinates and things like that if you would like to. So these technologies are just a way, different ways of handling uh, file formats and telling Heat how to locate and write the sign variables to these files. Uh, yeah, with the limited, you can choose if it's comma or tab or, or it can be, it can be pretty much anything. Um, besides that, we also have the possibility to uh, tag through scripts. Uh, so maybe you have an output file that is kind of flexible. You don't really know where the result value is that you want to extract because yeah, it can vary between different different designs. Uh, then you can use this script based uh, tagging where you probably have something to search for in in the output file and then step down a few lines and then go to the third column and things like that. So very, very easy way to to handle those uh, flexible uh, uh, output files as well. Um, <clears throat> all right, um, I think we can go also go to the next tab, which is study. Um, so again, we define the workflow, input and output files, compute resources, execution command for general analysis, uh, define all the design variables and responses. We pulled heats where to find uh, the, the locations in the input files and the output files to drive uh, value changes uh, in terms of design variables and also extract responses uh, from the output files. Um, and so the next step is essentially to set up the study or choose which study we want to do. Uh, by default, uh, the study type is the parameter optimization, and this is what Leandro talked about. Uh, here we have the possibility to, to run the Sherpa search algorithm. Um, we can choose between running a weighted sum of all the objectives we have we want to have in the study, or if we know that we perhaps will have uh, trade-offs between two or more objectives, uh, we can decide to run a multi-objective trade-off study and create a Pareto front for us to, 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 to look at uh, in the end. Uh, all, all the common other uh, search algorithms are available, of course, if you would like to do that. We recommend, of course, to do Sherpa. It's very much plug and play, and yeah, we, we see overall a lot better performance. Uh, you don't really need to be a uh, optimization uh, expert to, to run Sherpa, uh, as in if you would choose some of these other uh, algorithms, <laughs> they come with quite a lot of uh, settings that you will need to tune um, to, to get a good uh, a good performance on, on, on probably your uh, certain uh, design space. Um, other than that, everything you need to set is the number of evaluations you want to run. Uh, so a good thing to note here is that HEATS is very much designed to be to drive towards uh, product development deadlines. So let's say that we think our process going through one uh, evaluation of, of this workflow would take an hour and we have uh, three days. So maybe we'll say, uh, yeah, I have 72 evaluations. Uh, that's all I can afford. Then I need to start, then I need to deliver results. Um, if, however, maybe I would provide, would be able to provide more. Um, uh, Sherpa being kind of an adaptive search algorithm, uh, it will adapt its uh, strategy to find the best design depending on the number of evaluations you provide. So in the case where I would provide uh, 72, uh, perhaps it won't do as much global search, but very much focus on providing you with giving finding the best design at that allotted time or number of evaluations. Whereas uh, if I would perhaps give it 200 evaluations, uh, then uh, Sherpa will kind of change its strategy a bit and uh, starts it will be able to search, allow it to search a bit more globally. Uh, um, there's also the possibility, uh, which I didn't mention, that if we have the hardware and licensing for it, it is the possible it is possible to tell Sherpa to uh, run several designs simultaneously. So I can go in and say, I want to run three of these simultaneously, and that means you will have a linear speed up times three. Uh, if we have the license and resources for it, uh, and then I would be able to say I run 200 uh, evaluations, but I, they will be done in the three days that I have allotted for me. All right. Um, so after we set that up, um, we want to go to responses, kind of define our 
one thing I want to mention before that. So we talked about the default being parameter optimization. There are, of course, uh, tons of other study types. Uh, there's evaluation only, which is essentially a way to screen however you want. You can tell it to yeah, sweep all my design variables or or fill it in, in, in certain ways and just run a screening of, of the of your design space. Um, we also have yeah, new in this version, they've extracted adaptive sampling to a, a separate study type of, on its own. So this is a way of sampling the design space iteratively as as we have a, a algorithm that kind of learns throughout uh, throughout the study and yeah, starts to sampling in a smarter way than, than perhaps we would do with just a, a DOE or, or evaluation only. Uh, we also have, as I mentioned, yeah, we have DOEs of different levels and different types. So you have the Latin hypercube or yeah, two or three level uh, full or partial factorial. Um, we also have the, I mentioned, robustness and reliability. So we can run the Latin hypercube Monte Carlo or, or form, uh, form method uh, studies as well, uh, provided that we provide, uh, uh, given that we provide distributions for, for the, uh, the variables we, we want to have variability with. Um, but let's go back to the optimization study type and let's define a uh, a uh, optimization problem. So let's in this case, let's say we have mass and we want to minimize the mass while having constraints on stress and cost. Let's say stress should be less than uh, 500 cost less than 20 of some sort, some unit. So that's essentially a very easy way to set up the optimization problem. Uh, if you want to run multiple objectives, you drag whatever response you want to uh, have as well to the, to, to, to the objectives uh, table. Um, and after we run, we've defined our study, uh, it's essentially just going to the run tab, click the run button, and let Sherpa do its work. Um, so that's very short how to set up a heat study. Um, Leander, do you want me to do some uh, short post process, look at the heat's post as well? Um, we have time for that, right? Yes, we have. We have right. a little bit more time. Perfect. So I have I actually have a study open here that has uh, that is run. So I will go to I will go to. So <clears throat> here we have a study. Uh, or let's do this. Here we have a study of a. Uh, uh, we have an NXCAD model of a uh, underhood uh, uh, pipe design that we're driving changes to in the NXCAD and uh, mapping that to a star CCM CFD analysis. analysis. Uh, so this is a multi-objective study where uh, we're looking at flow uniformity and outlet swirl. Uh, we're trying to maximize flow uniformity while minimizing outlet swirl. And yeah, as you see, it's we run. We wanted 500 evaluations. We got 10 error designs, uh, which can be caused by the CAD model maybe not being able to uh, update properly or licensing issue. These things happen. It's 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 just good to know that heats will not stop just because uh, you get a design error, because they can uh, depend on uh, other things. Um, okay, so we're going to heats post and. Yeah, first we can look at this a uh, the Pareto front we've gotten. So we have we're plotting flow flow uniformity versus out, outlet swirl. So we've gotten a nice uh Pareto front here. Uh the model in itself looks like this. Uh so here's the flow uh inlet and outlet. And uh, yeah, we can actually animate this to kind of loop through the designs that we've uh that Heats has run. Uh, maybe I can speed it up a bit. So here, the the design parameter. I think it was seven design uh, variables here, changing some of the cross section radii and 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 angles and such. Um, so maybe first I can show you um, the design variable. Uh, it's a very nice way to just get all the information about all the designs that has been run. We have all our responses. We have all our uh, design variables here. And we can do some uh, nice things. We can uh, color code this and filter depending on if we want to look at uh, high and low. And, and already we can start seeing patterns. 
uh, using using the design table. Uh, we also have the parallel plot, which is another way of showcasing this. We have our two responses, we have our design variables, and all the lines here corresponds to uh, one of the design that's that we've been uh, that we've evaluated. So here you can you can do fil filter on some of the design variables and uh, color code however you want. Uh, but the real the real uh, power comes in when you start using plot views. So you can actually uh, start. Uh, combining these plots together and get a better visual view of what's going on. So um, yeah, you, you can you can flip through in the design table and you get an updated uh, view that's been imported from star CCM. Um, and maybe we can like for it's this for this study, we see that maybe we have two clusters here in the Pareto front that we can identify. So we have this upper bound here that shows high flow uniformity, uh, but a little bit more outlet swirl. Uh, and we also have another group down here. So we see that that has slightly different uh, variables of some sort, uh, corresponding to different designs. Uh, and we kind of kind of see that how the change in angle here is yeah a bit abruptly changed for for these this cluster below here, whereas it's more of a smooth transition uh, in in the upper cluster. Uh, and yeah, we can we can break that out, add to a add that to a design set. We can add this to a design set and maybe we can do um, maybe we can add those two uh, and do some nice uh, nice visuals and then you can see we've extracted two clusters we're able to see where they differ we see that there's a big difference between in the x1 design variable uh, y2 and x2 variable whereas uh, they all push the R2 radius to the max, and also the Y2 to the to the lowest. So already we're starting to get quite nice insights about um, yeah how we can design this this pipe. Uh, and we have it seems like we have options depending on how we where we want to be positioned on in the Pareto frontier to kind of yeah take decisions on, on uh, which path to take between these two clusters. <clears throat> uh, other than that. The heat's post is is quite nicely uh, structured, so depend you, you kind of get help in depending on what type of uh, data mining you want to do. Do you want to find similar clusters? Do you want to find trade offs and patterns? Uh, yeah, you want to do two D and three D relational plots, and you have self organizing maps and heat maps, and there's there's yeah, I just want to. Conveyed. There's a tons of possibilities here to do data mining and data visualization that really helps will help you with the uh, yeah gaining insight on on whatever design space uh, issue you you you, you face in, in your development. Uh, with that, I think we can. Uh, I will wrap this demo up. Great. Good. 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 Thank good, you, Ken. Good. I will stop sharing and. Uh, Okay, uh, I just have uh, some remarks over here. Follow me, David. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I brought it up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just some summary and uh, some outlook over here. That's a key scan, uh, seamless your engineering process. So see us, uh, with, with HITS, we just simplify your uh, your uh, innovation process, and uh, as I told you, we have a really a brilliant team over here, you know, in Europe, uh, to help you to introduce uh, heat in your engineering process, and uh, help exactly to find out uh, the innovation and explore the new and find a better design faster. I know, David. Exactly, and uh, as both uh, Leandro and uh, Kim have shown here, it's uh, again ease of use is, is the key word. Uh, but just because it's easy to use doesn't mean that it's not uh, powerful. So I think that's one of the uh, the very big thing that that it puts uh, heats aside from the competition is that it's it's really really powerful, but it's easy to use. So you don't need to be an optimization expert to to really utilize all these uh, these powerful mathematics behind the scenes. 
Also, exactly. if I can add one thing, like just uh, the first pillar with process automation, we don't touch upon it that much, but all the, already the value of have, being able to run uh, workflows without simplifications and, and just ensuring quality by doing something automatically uh, as a huge upside. Exactly. Uh, another thing that we we um, didn't show, but it's uh, it's built in into the uh, to the powerful Sherpa algorithm is the the ability to analyze large data sets. So there's no real upper limit in terms of how many uh, variables that you can include in your uh, project or in your study. So um, th that's also very powerful and, and yet again an easy um, study to use. So. Um, uh, anything else you want to wrap up, Leandro? Or should we see if we have any uh, questions to, um, to answer? No, well, maybe not. Maybe not. I just would like, uh, uh, if you allow me, just to ramp up. May I just start to share over here? And uh, the, I'd like just, oh no, it's not that one, it's that one. So, it's, it's included in the Think Center portfolio. Uh, as we mentioned many times that we have integration with the all CAD and the all CAD, all CAD and the all CAD tools. But for on the Siemens Thin Center portfolio, we have system simulation, mechanical simulations, uh, 3D simulations, no, for any kinds of physics, uh, structural behavior, fatigue behavior, electromagnetic is high, low voltage, it's really no process, no problem, and physical testing. And heat is included on the accelerator platform. Okay, it is included in our accelerator platform uh, that we have uh, three main pillars over here, comprehensive digital twin, personalized, adaptable, modern and flexible open ecosystem. Uh, as I mentioned many times in terms of innovation. So I mentioned many times in terms of innovation that every company looks for innovation, but uh, sometimes don't know how to innovate. This is exactly that we are emphasizing today. And just to have an idea in terms of how you can implement HITS, HITS, we have the roadmap, the roadmap for training, the roadmap for innovation. You have your goal. So as soon as you invest on the technology, we can start to, uh, to handle, you can start to manipulate. And the training is just one day training, one day training. It's very fast. It's very fast to starting to use and to starting to have uh, better process, better projects. So this is just some customer testimonials. Uh, we do not ask, so we do not ask the customers to, to bring us the testimonials. And uh, we have just three examples over here on track, uh, Pratt, uh, Pratt Miller and BD in, in US. Uh, it, it's really interesting that one from Pratt that uh, emphasize how Sherpa, so bring them, leverage their best ideas, uh, is the only one that can solve our highly constrained models. It's it's really interesting to mention something like that. And just to summary, so we have our four pillars as uh, Kim uh, show it over here, process automation, distributed execution, efficient search, and insight and discovery. Our advantage, so, Easy to use. It's really, really simple to use. You can have results faster, really, really faster. We can accelerate your design. You can simplify your engineering process. You can redefine your simulation strategy in a very simple way. Really, really say very simple way. So, David, we are absolutely open for any questions from the audience. And even I'd like to invite everyone to follow us at the at the HITS official web page on LinkedIn. Okay, if you if you just open your mobile camera, you can just record that QR code and you can go directly to the our HITS official page. And even I really invite the people over here to follow the CA Valley uh, LinkedIn web page that the content over there, it's really interesting too. Yes, so um, there are no uh, questions in the chat, but um... Please uh, reach out to to, uh, to us after the the meeting if you have any questions that comes up afterwards, and um, and certainly if there's anything we can do to help you to uh, start this journey. So um, other than that, I would like to uh, thank Leandro and uh, Kim for for their support to this webinar, and I would like to thank every one of you to uh, spending the time uh, today. 
and uh, I hope that uh, we'll get a chance to connect uh, later on. So thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, Bye now. Thank you, guys.